Hello and welcome back to Gamer's Remorse. Today we're checking out the game Cave vs. Cave. Uh, the, it's a two-player game based off of Caverna. Probably familiar with Caverna. Uh, this one came out by Mayfair and Lookout Spiel. Uh, it's an Uwe Rosenberg title, one of his uh, two-player games. Uh, so in this game, you're creating a cave similar to Caverna. Uh, but we're essentially neighbors. We're dwarven neighbors, each competing to have the nicer cave. So what we do is we spend uh, our action turns, effectively. You get, let me flip these over. You get the number of actions per round based upon what round this is in the game. There's a total of eight rounds. So in the first round, you flip over this tile, indicating that you each get two actions. So the first player gets to choose one of the actions from these options, and then they will perform said actions on their own tableau here. Um, so for instance, undergrowth, if I were to take this action, I would... Um, uh, activate one of the rooms in my cave. So right now I only have one, the cave entrance, and it has an action on it. So I would gain uh, plus one wood, stone, wheat, or um, erma or something like that is what asparagus. they call it. I call it asparagus. So I, I would say, oh, okay, I'll take a stone, right? That's my first action. Second thing is, is it gives you another action, and then it says increase your tableau uh, by two wood. Later I can use these to buy other rooms and or perform other actions. Brian then would choose one of the actions. I would take another action. Brian would take another action. That would complete the round because we're on two. As we complete subsequent rounds, we would each get three actions. And then on the last round, we each get four actions. Uh, as you're doing this, you're competing to try and get uh, points from building the various rooms, as well as increasing your gold amount. Between those two values, whoever has the most wins the game. So let's give it a quick run through mm -hmm. and uh, see what we think. Yeah. So we create the board by randomizing. Uh, I guess these are set, these four yeah. actions here. And then we randomize the twos, threes, and of course the four is always the same. So we flip over the first to begin the round. So furnishing and the shortest player begins the game or most dwarf like, which I think is me. Here you go, buddy. All right. And we each start. <laughs> we have one of everything from the get go. Correct. Yep. And we don't have to feed our people. Best part of the game. Thanks, Rosenberg. <laughs> Finally, <laughs> uh, I'm going to be some cultivating. OK, so I will get two mm -hmm. wheat. Yep. And an asparagus. Nice. And I will activate my cave entrance to get myself a stone. There you go. Dwarves like rocks. It didn't matter in this turn of events, but you always need to do the top action first. Oh, yeah. Because they might cost you something yep. later, so you can't manipulate the order. But I'm a dwarf, so I do what I want. There you go. <laughs> All right, so that event happened. Um, I'm going to go ahead and excavate. So what that means is I get to excavate, we have these rubble tiles, mm -hmm. um, so I get to take down one of those, and I'm going to look at what's out there. Ba -do -ba -do -ba -do. Um, I really want that one. That's right. Why am I doing this one first? That's a good question. Uh, I don't want to do excavation. Control Z. I'm going to furnish is what I'm going to do. So I get one food. And then it costs me one food per action we get this round to build something. We're in the second round, so that goes down to zero. Mm -hmm. And then I can build any one of these. And I have decided that the spinning wheel is arguably the best. At least I think it is. I'm probably wrong. So that one goes there. It requires a wall on the top. Oh, and it also costs me one wood. Mm -hmm. um, but once you put it there, because your wall is there, you can rotate it so you can read it normally. Yeah. So that was my turn, Brian's turn. All right, I am going to do some excavating. Okay. Uh, now, fun fact, dwarves eat anything. So at any point you can change wheat, gold, or asparagus into food. Mm -hmm. So I'm actually gonna change one of my wheat into a food. So I nice. have two food. I'm gonna spend two food to excavate twice. Nice. And I'm going to be gaining a stone. So I'm going to excavate this location. Which gives you food. Which gives me a food. Nice. And then I'm going to excavate... Excavate? Excavate <laughs> this location. Dwarfs don't speak English. It's not our common tongue. And that is my turn. Nice. Well done. All right. I, for my last action, for my final trick, mwah, I will go ahead and do undergrowth. Um, 
And so I activate one of my uh, actions here. And I am thinking gold doesn't do me a whole lot of good this early. So I think I'm actually going to do cave entrance mm -hmm. to increase. I know I'm going to get wood later on. So I'm going to go ahead and increase my alpha alpha sprouts. Oh, I don't know why I went two. It's only one. And then I get two wood for the action I took. Okay. Yep. And that is the end of the round. Mm -hmm. So first player marker Passes. moves to the next player. Everything resets. Everything resets and we flip over a new tile. Ooh, masonry. Yes. Masonry. All right. So what do I want to do? Do, 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 do. I think I want to excavate, which sounds silly because I know Brian's going to hop on that uh, uh, masonry tile. And, or am I? And build a wall because he can. Because he's Waldorf. Crazy. So I'm going to excavate. And oh, I don't have any food though. You can eat greens. You can. You can't eat wood. Yeah. Aww. I'll go ahead and do that and I'll excavate one location. I will excavate this one. And it goes here. All right, I'm going to be... And I get oh, one stone. Sorry, sorry, jump to the gun. It's all good. It's I'm going to be predictable and do some masonry. I mean, why wouldn't you? Why wouldn't I? And I'm going to first activate my cave entrance. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to move my wheat up one. Wheat there. I am then going to masonry to move up a wood by one. Mm -hmm. And then I am building a wall. Very nice. Rooster. Five wood or five stone turns in to four gold. Wow. Or, or three, three activations. activations. Oh man, that three activations is, is pretty brilliant. I think I'm going to have to use it just for the activations. Be my guest. Be my guest. Be my guest. Downside is my food corner. Not great right now because I just used it. Uh. I'll do a stall. So it costs me one wood and one gold. And I'll put it right here. Mm -hmm. Ba-dum-bum. Right. Cultivating. Cultivate. Activating my cave entrance for wheat. And I'll get two more wheat and an asparagus. Nice. Okay. I will... Uh, I was hoping you were going to do it yet. Expedition, so I get three actions. Um, I'll get plus three asparagus. One, two, three. I will do this one, which takes five and turns it into four gold. So that drops down to one, and I get one, two, three, four gold. And... I could do this one to get another gold, or I already did that one. Did that one. I get plus one something. I'll do this one and increase to three food. Okay, good choices. Your turn. Okay, I'm gonna undermine doing two. I was hoping to do three. <laughs> I'll turn three wheat. One, two, three. To one, two. Food is already maxed out. Then I'm going to turn three gold into four gold and another food. Nice. So that's both. I am going to... I need to find a use for my food. My food is totally worthless. <laughs> it's just sitting here. You've based your entire economy around that. So, I mean, you could build... I keep a... waiting for a thing you could to... build appear. a whole bunch of stuff. Yeah. Man, I'm almost tempted to build a whole bunch of stuff. Why is this so hard for me? I hate this. Okay, excavation. I'm gonna spend two food to excavate two things. I'm gonna excavate this guy and this guy, and I got one food for my troubles. Hey, look at that, a blue room. Okay. Right. Oh, and I got one stone. Boop. And blue rooms. They're constantly in effect, mm -hmm. so 
You Every time you turn. get, oh, whenever you get one. Yeah, whenever you get one to three asparagus, you get one to food as a result. All right. On top of it. I'm going to do expansion to demolish this storeroom. And then I'm going to spend five food. One, two, three, four, five. <laughs> we have a visitor. Hey, buddy. Um, and seven gold. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven for a stateroom. So breach. Mm -hmm. So you break a wall. Yep. You get rid of a wall and you get those items. Two, two stone, three food, and a gold. Yep. All right, that and it doesn't remove your building, so you can yeah, break this can wall break and keep your wall. treasury. Yep. Yep. I think what I want more though is wheat. But you know what? What's what's one more time for good measure, right? Right. Just for so funsies. I'm gonna I'm gonna cultivate. <laughs> I'm gonna take a wheat. And I'm gonna get two wheat and asparagus. Nice. I think I am going to. I think I'm gonna expedition. That was gonna be my next play. <laughs> I'm gonna get three of these. One, two, three. Then I'm going to cave entrance, which just seems dumb, but I'm doing it. Then I'm going to stall, turning all five of these into four gold. One, two, three. And there was a plus ten gold around here somewhere. Four. Put that right there. And I think that's all that's it does. Alright, I am going to undermine. And I'm going to turn three. One, two, three. And two, one. Two, one, two, three, four. Nice. Um, I am going to furnish. So I get plus one. We're in round three, so it costs mm -hmm. me one, two, three to build something. And I'm going to build the gold vein, which. Is that actually what I want to build? Let me think about this. Because this is pretty useful for me, because I get that all the time. But it's only food, so this gives me actual gold. See, I'll do that, because I have wall wall. Mm -hmm. And I it costs me five. So we're at ten. One, two, three, four, five. So I lose that. Wait, that was my food, not my gold. They're both gold yeah. in color. Okay. And you're good? Yeah. I'm gonna breach. Dropping that. Nice. One, two. Max out my food. Give me a gold. Nice. So this is the last action for this round. Oh, I'm out of food. Womp womp. Can I borrow some food? Tell you what, I'll sell it to you. <laughs> Five gold per piece. That is a steal for you. Uh, I could do that one thing and then I could take a free gold, or I could take three of those. Hmm. <laughs> Why is this so difficult all the time? Oh, Rosenberg, you tricky minx. Yeah, I just called him a tricky <laughs> minx. Let's just roll with it. Um, I'm just not going to say anything. Pretend like it didn't happen. Yep, that's probably a smart move. So I could just do that and just straight up go for pure gold, or I could set up for the next turn to then... Because I'm working this whole asparagus gold mm -hmm. market. Question becomes, what matters more to me? I'll do this. And then I will activate this room to turn... Three... I'll get three asparagus. Because um, later I can turn that into two, or double down and get four. Does that make sense? I'm just thinking about the action economy. It doesn't make sense. I should go one, two, three. We'll make that just one gold. Boom. Okay, now I get to excavate one thing. I'll excavate this guy, which there's nothing there. I feel like if I knew this game better, I would be able to like be like, this one, because it has the food under it. There's only two food ones, and it's these two. Oh. 
Now you know. But um, bum Okay, anyway, that was my turn. That yeah. is the end of the round. So we reset. Yep. And you get the special ability that only you get. Final round. But only if you have more gold than your opponent. Which, which you do. is just almost exactly. So I will take this, which does what? You get to build a wall and a thing. For the price of free. <laughs> well, I need to figure out what I want to build, don't I? Um... I don't have the resources. I don't have the resources. Ooh, I have the resources. Maybe I'll do this guy purely for the points. That's the highest one out there, too. Yeah, that's Sweet. what I was going to do. Sweet. Now what Brown. I'll put it up here because it doesn't matter. And I'll just put this guy here. And it cost me four. Extinguished. Okay. There you go. All right. I am going to do some masonry. And I'm going to activate my stateroom. Give me a golden asparagus. And then I'm going to take a wood. And I'm going to put this here. I'll do this one because it's apparently my favorite. And I will take three actions. I will turn... I'll do this one for three. Then I will turn the three into two gold. Then for my third and final act, I will use the gold vein. Just double checking my math. Yep. To get one stone and one more gold. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Good? Yep. All right. I am going to do housework. Okay. So I'll pay four. One, mm -hmm. two, three, four. And I am going to build a weaving room. One, two, I'm going to pay five. One, two, three, four, five. Four, eight. I think the grindhouse is what I wanted. Now I'll do a storeroom. Nice. Okay. You done? Yep. I'm going to do undermining and two actions, I will gain three, one, two, three, and then I'll turn those three into two, so one, two, grab my ten back. Mm -hmm. Your turn. I'm gonna do drift mining. I will activate my weaving room. One, two, one, two, one, two. And then I will demolish that. And to get a... Wait, do I get a food? Yep. Excited. Is this my final action? Then? This One, is your two, final three, action. Four, five, six. Oh, man. I think I will go with cultivation since you've had it every other mm -hmm. round since the beginning of hey, time. You've taken expedition. It's only fair. That's true. An expedition is better than cultivation. No breathing. All right, and then I get to activate one thing. And which one do I take? The one gold or the one gold and one stone? This is where you go, you fool, you should have taken sacrificial to. altar or something. No, I'm not going to tell you that much. No. I'm going to do that so I get a food. And then I spend five food, correct? Which one did you take? Sorry, yeah, this one? Furnishing. Oh, furnishing? Yeah. It's going to take you four food. Four so you food. got one food and then it takes you okay. four food. For some food reason I was thinking it was going to cost me five. Uh -uh. But I have four. Um, and then I think grindstone is the most points I can place. Yep. So I need to ditch a stone for a grindstone. Like a grindstone cowboy. And that's it. Yep. Boom. That's all she wrote. Mic drop. Points. Oh, points. Gold so is worth a point. Yep. Uh, total victory these. points printed on the built rooms of the tiles plus gold. Yep. Math time! 48? 49. Alright, double checking my math. <laughs> Pretty sure I have 48. That's incredibly close, yeah. all things considered. I thought you had me beat. We had the exact same number of tiles. What helped me, I think, in the end was me working the whole asparagus gold thing. Like, yeah. it was constantly. Yeah. 
bumping those up. That is shockingly close for neither of us knowing what we were doing. <laughs> I mean, there's probably a fair amount of uh, different possible ways mm -hmm. to win the game, and yeah. And at one point, did you purposely hate draft me out of doing things? Yeah. Really? I okay. don't think it was worth it in the long run. Okay, because there was a couple I, of I times where I wasted an like... entire age. Yeah. Hate drafting you. Okay. That's what so, I thought. So you got some benefit. Yeah. I got no benefit. <laughs> which is why I had so much food. Yeah. Because it just kept giving yeah, me food. I was I'm like, like... Meanwhile, I have zero. I'm just like yeah. deadlining it. So like, okay. I, I don't think it was worth it. Okay. But at the time, I was like, oh, I'm going to hate draft Sean. Uh, yeah, because I was like, I have no options out there yeah. that will give me anything other yeah. than like a secondary bonus. Yeah. But it was like, man. I mean, really what I should have done is hate draft, hate draft, do something beneficial to me. Sure. Or hate Ultimate, draft, benefit, yeah. hate draft. Hate draft enough to like really limit yeah. my options, then do something. Yeah. yeah. That was really interesting. I'm just a bad hate drafter. There you go. All right, but. so that was that was Caverna, Cave versus Cave. Uh, my overall opinion, my expectations were actually low because I'd heard some things about mm -hmm. it. People were like, ah, it's not really that good. I actually did kind of like it. It was like this constant mental chess game. I will say it's dry as a bone. If you're looking for, like, theme, mm, decorating a cave, not exactly that meaty, you know? Yeah. But... Um, there is a certain amount of mental chess there. There's hate drafting, we talked yeah. about that. There's also trying to figure out your engine, you know? Like, what are you using to try and get those end game points? For me, it was turning asparagus into gold. Uh, there's also a wheat into gold. There's a pure gold route you can take. Mm -hmm. uh, it's really all about action economy and trying to make your actions as efficient as possible. Um, as a designer, there were some clever things in there where this is a worker placement game. It's not incredibly obvious, but you get so many actions per turn. Um, and those are your workers. Your actions are your workers in this game. Mm -hmm. So it was actually really cleverly done. I found those things very interesting. Uh, the theme, however, a little dry. The artwork is perfectly matched with Caverna, mm -hmm. which I had no problems there. Uh, and they even give you like the little meeples that you can use. Yeah. The only problem is they're a little bit bigger than I like for such a small board. So that's why we use the little tokenized pieces. Mm -hmm. uh, but other than that, what, what do you think, Brian? Did you enjoy it? Um, would you play it again? Would you play it with your fiance? Um, yeah, I definitely enjoyed it. Mm -hmm. And a lot of the complaints I heard are people who say, why would I play this when I could play two-player Caverna? My answer is time. Yeah. Because um, I've had friends tell me that exact thing. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm like, we, we played this in a fraction of the time two-player Caverna would take. And admittedly, I do enjoy Core Caverna more, mm -hmm. but if I don't have a few hours, this is a solid replacement. Um, other two-player games in the same line of Uves that I really like, I, I think I'd rotate through these. Sure. Um, like, I really enjoy Patchwork, but I can only play so much Patchwork before I'd want to play something else, and I could easily fit this in. Mm -hmm. I do think it's a good game. It's very cerebral. There's a lot more thinking than I think I was expecting mm -hmm. for from what it looked like. But there was a lot of analysis paralysis. Oh, yeah. Um, which hit hard early. <laughs> yeah. And it's just like, oh, this is one of those. So it was fun to play, not the best spectator. I feel like there'll be a lot of oh, cutting yeah. um, if we show the playthrough that we had. Uh, but there, it was very enjoyable. Like you mentioned, the artwork, they pretty much just drug stuff in from Caverna, which mm -hmm. totally fine. Uh, my one thought that I would have liked to see is more tiles. And so, you know, having, you know, five or six number two tiles. Mm -hmm. So that would add more variation in the game by having different placements. Um, as it is, that changes up based on just the order. Um, I kind of like how these become buildings, but there are some really good buildings that would have been amazing that we never got to, mm -hmm. simply because we didn't demolish them. Which, again, there's that replayability factor. But I kind of would have liked to be able to choose from whatever. But again, then massive AP. Sure. So it's like they went a path that I completely understand why they went there. Mm -hmm. um, I think it made a better game the way they did it. Um, but I could see some people like looking at this and being like, "Ah, uh, all right, I'm gonna demolish this way so I can get up here." And sure, that would be infuriating for me. Um, but all in all, I think it was a great game. It was fun. It was fairly quick. Mm -hmm. There was an element of strategy. Um, there wasn't too much luck. Um, which a lot of these oh, yeah. games there isn't room for luck. Right. Um, so it, it can have that detriment where if I play this with certain people that just aren't as good of gamers, they'll hate it. 
So you yeah. need to play with someone on like an equal level. Oh yeah. Which absolutely. I feel like we were one point differential. So I'm like, yeah. that's fairly equal. Um, but there's other people I would just dominate this game. There's other people that would just dominate me. Sure. You kind of have to be picky, I think, who you play it with. Sure. Yeah, but my biggest takeaway was there isn't a lot of theme here. And so mm -hmm. if people are looking for like these epic events, it's not yeah. here. Yeah, and that's for like... I, I feel like this is a game I would enjoy with certain people, like Eric, he's not here right now. But like me and Eric, I think, would enjoy this game. Mm -hmm. uh, my fiance prefers more thematic games. Sure. So I feel like she would not enjoy this at all. And she's like more of a co-op player. Right? Yeah. And like, this you know, is really cutthroat. Yeah. And so like she would much rather prefer, you know, like Codames Duet or sure. Consulting Detective. Mm -hmm. But then I have other friends who would love the cult throat, cutthroat nature that sure. this has. So there's sure. definitely room for it on my shelf. I'm glad I have it, mm -hmm. um, but it's one I, I don't think I'll play it as much as some other two-player games, but I'll definitely play it. Sure. But what, are, what are your final thoughts? Any final thoughts? I recommend it. So I love the two-player line of games. Mm -hmm. Mayfair has their set. Uh, I think Z-Man has theirs. Um, you know what's interesting? They're all the same form factor box, so I just have them lined up on my oh, wall yeah. uh, as like the two-player section. I like this one. There's some really horrible two-player games. This is not one of them. I would add this to my collection, mm -hmm. no problem. Um, I'm not going to say which ones I don't like, but some of my highlights, uh, All Creatures Big and Small, also mm -hmm. another Uwe Rosenberg title, fantastic. Um, there was also the Watson and Holmes. Mm -hmm. uh, that one's good. Yep. Um, but yeah, th this is probably in my top, uh, I would say, 15 or so two-player nice two-player small box games. It's a movie idea right there. Top two-player games. Boom. We'll make it happen. We probably won't. Maybe one day. <laughs> Let us know if you want that. <laughs> yeah. All yeah. right. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye. Your dwarf. What is that? That is what we call a bug. Yeah. Why is it in my house? Anyway.